Hey there, and welcome to the last module of this MOOC. The topics discussed today will be around the definition of our current epoch, the Anthropocene, planetary health concept and the sustainable development goals defined by the United Nations. And of course, how the microbiome can be implemented into these concepts and goals and assist us facing the major global challenges of our time. Since this is the last module, you already learned a lot about the microbiome and its profound and generally positive effects for the whole biological world, including of course us humans. Today I want to bring this into a broader picture and discuss the microbiome's impact not only on individual organisms, but on the entire surface of our planet and its atmosphere. But before we start with the solutions, I think it's quite necessary to stress on the global problems that are affecting us already and will certainly affect everyone in the near future. Human activities have disturbed Earth ecosystems in such a fundamental way that our footprint is even detectable at a stratigraphic signature in ice and sediments. For scientists, this was sufficient justification to propose a new geological epoch, the Anthropocene. The Anthropocene is driven by rapid industrialization, growth of the human population, large-scale agriculture, deforestation, pollution by synthetic chemicals and metals, a massive biodiversity loss and global species exchange, and on top of it, the changing climate, which drives positive feedbacks to all those factors and accelerates the hazards. The planetary boundary concept is an approach which was introduced in 2009 to define the environmental limits within which the functions of Earth systems allow safe operating of humanity. The concept is based on the stability of these nine Earth system processes, and four of them are already in either high risk or increasing risk. The planetary boundaries for biosphere integrity, which refers to species loss and exchange, land system change, referring to deforestation, biogeochemical flows, referring to phosphorus and nitrogen flux, and the climate change boundary have already been crossed. Notably, all these factors are connected by the risk of self-reinforcing feedbacks. It is obvious that all these major alterations of Earth systems induced significant changes in the microbial world as well. However, so far, there is no complete picture of the microbiome in the Anthropocene how it is affected by human practices and how it is responding or contributing to the crossing of planetary boundaries. Today we can only try to link the impact of human activities to single parameters and suggest a common signature of the microbiome in the Anthropocene. Common characteristics are a decrease of microbial evenness and specificity due to an increase of better adapted R strategists, the ones that proliferate and grow faster, pathogens and hypermutators as well as specific antimicrobial resistant gene carriers. In addition, Anthropocene-driven evolution of new microbial properties is accelerated. Human activity can affect the Earth microbiota both directly and indirectly. Directly by habitat disturbances, greenhouse gas emission, pollution, eutrophication and intensive agriculture, including land usage and applied chemicals. Indirectly, microbiota are affected by the extinction of plant and animal species. As you already know, each higher organism is closely associated with its microbiota, and there are several that are specific and uniquely associated with a particular plant or animal species. If this species goes extinct, also its microbes are probably lost forever. Recently, in frame of the largest global survey, botanists have reported alarming extinction rates for native plants, up to 500 times higher than it would be expected as a result of natural forces alone. Among the many threatened species are wild relatives of our crops, the wild and weedy cousins of domesticated plants that also possess valuable traits for crop breeding, such as pest and disease resistance. These plants have been displaced by very few high-yield crops in order to meet the nutritional demands of humans. As a consequence, diet across the world have become more homogeneous and are mostly based on few staple crops. The consumption of local and regionally important crops has declined by two-thirds. So, while plant, animal, insect and microbial diversity is constantly getting lost, Human population constantly grows, and over the past 50 years our society progressed and evolved extremely fast. Sounds like we are actually the big winners of the Anthropocene? Well, we are not. 
In fact, human health is entirely dependent on ecosystem health and the continuous environmental degradation, pollution, spread of ultra-processed foods, incivility, social stress and injustice, all markers of the Anthropocene, are certainly contributing to our health. We are in between a non-communicable disease crisis, also called the Anthropocene syndrome. Diseases such as obesity, diabetes, most cancers, strokes, autoimmune diseases, most heart diseases, irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, autism, food allergies and neurological and psychiatric disorders, all of them can be linked to human-associated microbial diversity. And there is the burden of emerging antimicrobial resistance on our planet, which is assumed to cost us 10 million deaths a year by 2050. We discussed antimicrobial resistance already in our previous module, and you know, antimicrobial resistance is ancient in the environment, but the rapid spread and continuous global emergence of antimicrobial resistance is directly linked to us using and misusing antibiotics and chemicals that cause resistance. On top of the threats to our own species is the global food crisis we are heading for. The unbedding agricultural intensification at the cost of natural resources is encountering the limits and results in serious threats to global food security and safety. So yes, the current situation on our planet seems desperate, but we can still steer the course. And fortunately, besides publishing dystopic statistics and burning issues, scientists and responsible bodies are also working hard on solutions. A huge package of such solutions is implemented in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals defined by the United Nations. The microbiome can contribute to achieve several of these SDGs. Microbes can offer such a huge array of options and in terms of their diversity and functions, they might be the last research option we can count on for reversing the impacts of industrialization, intensive agriculture and human overpopulation. Today, the interrelation of ecosystem microbiomes became also recognized in the One Health concept of the World Health Organization, as well as the planetary health concept that includes environmental health and its relation to human cultures and habits. How exactly the microbiome can contribute to the sustainability of the Anthropocene will be the topic of the final chapter of our MOOC, Microbiome and Health.